Hi guys, this is Natasha Blazaki. Uh, many greetings from Greece and many, many wishes for a new year uh, full of uh, love and happiness, uh, health and prosperity, and, and of course much uh, less stress and uh, frustration. Uh, so I really hope that uh, this year will be a lot better and uh, we'll all have uh, a break, uh, take some deep breaths and carry on with our lives uh, as before uh, uh, this whole madness with the pandemic. I'm so excited to be part of this uh, YouTube Hope. I love being among uh, talented artists that have uh, so many techniques to share. Uh, such uh, unique uh, styles and uh, I know it's a great opportunity for uh, many of you to get ideas to be inspired and uh, learn a lot of things from our tutorial choosing a symbol for hope was not an easy thing because from the minimum search I did I saw that uh, there are uh, many, many symbols uh, for hope and uh, that was only natural because uh, uh, people uh, have hope in their hearts, it's in our genes. We can only go on if we have uh, something to hope for. Uh, so I decided to choose a symbol that has uh, a very special meaning uh, in my country's uh, culture and comes from uh, the ancient uh, years and that is the olive tree because uh, that was uh, the tree that uh, uh, goddess Athena offered to the Athenians and uh, became um, the protector goddess of uh, the city. It is a tree, uh, it's a very strong tree that lives uh, hundreds or even thousands of years. It's a tree that can grow almost everywhere and uh, their fruit, the olives, are um, so nutritious and so uh, good for uh, humans that um, it was uh, uh, for for uh, the goddess to offer that to the people was uh, the ultimate gift. It was as if she was saying that uh, you only need this tree to survive. Um, and after a little more research, I ran into Vincent van Gogh's uh, uh, paintings uh, of uh, olive groves and I was fascinated uh, because I absolutely adore uh, his uh, unique um, uh, dynamic uh, style. It is almost overwhelming and uh, decided to uh, make a mixed media interpretation of that uh, painting and that's how I ended up creating the project uh, I'm presenting to you today. Uh, it's a mixed media canvas uh, measuring 50 by 70 centimeters. It is a composition of uh, three olive uh, trees that uh, grow from uh, a very uh, unique, distinct, I, I don't want to say anything more, uh, kind of uh, earth. You will see it very soon. And uh, that is my symbolization in this canvas that uh, life can uh, grow again from anything really. I'm so grateful that you stopped by and uh, I really hope you have a great time uh, in this uh, YouTube hop. Um, thank you so much for all your support and again my best wishes for the new year. I'm working on a pre gessoed canvas that measures uh, 50 by 70 centimeters and I've already given it a coat of orange acrylic paint. By the way, you can find all the details about the materials I used in this project 
in the description area below. Then, I'm stripping off a bunch of surgical masks, the ones we're using to protect ourselves from the coronavirus, and I'm keeping only the outer light blue layer, which I'm gluing on the canvas with decoupage glue. I'm layering all the pieces to create the field on which the olive trees stand. I'm using a few broken branches to create the trunk and the branches of the tree in the middle, which is my focal point on the canvas. Actually, these branches are from thyme bushes and I had picked them on a day trip to Paros Island. I'm using heavy body gel to glue the branches on the canvas and I'm also using some crafting tape to keep them in place till the gel dries completely. In fact, I had to wait overnight for the whole collage to dry. I'm using a cutout piece from a bigger stencil and modeling paste to create a background layer of texture around the tree and then I'm using another stencil with fiber paste to create a second layer of texture. This paste is thick and gives very beautiful and crisp impressions. I'm also spreading it with my hands on the upper part of the canvas in order to create some texture on the sky too. To accentuate the lower part of the canvas, I'm mixing art stones with soft matte gel and I'm spreading them in the grooves between the masks. This way I'm giving a more organic look to my ground. Then I'm collaging some small pieces of paper on the sky. Those pieces come from a medicine instructions leaflet and it's from a very heavy antibiotic that unfortunately a close family member is taking right now. I'm using those pieces of paper symbolically just because no matter how dark some days may be, a brighter sky will eventually dawn and life will go on. Then, I'm applying a wash of light blue mixture with a natural sponge, uh, of course could be any kind of sponge or a piece of cloth or even a baby wipe. And that is just a first layer for my sky. Gradually, I'm using darker tones of blue to create the background layer on the foliage of the trees. This layer will give me the shadows between the leaves and the branches. When working with acrylics, first you want to put down the darker colors, create your shadows and then work the next layers with lighter tones to achieve the mid-tones and finally the highlights. The key here is to let the previous layers show through the next ones so all the colors come together to give shape and depth to your painting.
order to give more dimension to my focal point, which is the tree in the middle, I'm gluing some moss over the branches. After a while my tree got a weird triangular shape, like an arrow point, which I didn't like very much, and uh, later on I altered it. I'm continuing by mixing various dark tones of blue, green and purple and I'm painting the trees with them. I'm also using the purple and blue tones to create the shadows under the trees. Purple and blue are complementary colors of orange, which means that they are on opposite sides of the color wheel. By combining complementary colors, you get high contrast and impact on your projects. Together, those colors will appear brighter and more prominent. Then, I'm using lighter blue tones for the highlights. By putting highlights right next to the shadows, I'm creating even more depth to my canvas. Also using some warm yellow orange tones to create a halo around the trees as if they're glowing from the sunlight that shines on them. As a detail I'm stamping around the trees with a stamp that has an electronic circuit design and I'm doing that because us humans have come to depend so much on modern technology that even if we stand in the middle of an olive grove we carry a smartphone, which means an electronic circuit, in our pockets and we will eventually take it out to take some pictures of the olive trees. So symbolically I'm making it as if the circuit is an extension of the tree branches. As I said before, at the end I'm changing the shape of my hope tree and I'm making it round. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'd love to read your comments about it. And if you have any questions about the materials or the process, I'll be glad to help you. Greetings from Greece. Bye-bye.